everyone. Myself, Dr. Babita Parashar, Head Department of Education, Manav Rachna University, Faridabad, welcomes you all to our session on Science for All. Let us begin with the session with sharing the objectives for the same session. We will identify with science as a social endeavor to describe the importance of scientific literacy in our day-to-day -day life and interpret the events in day-to-day -day life with a scientific attitude. So these are the objectives for our this particular session and as we progress through the session we will be working on the same. Before we begin uh, with the session let's little brainstorm. If we ask any common man that what do you understand by science or uh, what images does uh, the mention of science creates in your mind. This uh, the three pictures which I am sharing here are based on an informal research study which I did. Uh, we asked everyone around uh, from our uh, helping staff in the in the school um, to in the marketplace, the hawkers, the vendors, um, our, our housemaids. When we asked them that what do you understand by science, uh, through science they understand space. So they are spacecraft, satellites to be launched. Through science they could relate to surgeons uh, performing very intricate, uh, difficult uh, surgeries and through science they, they understand a lab setup with where chemicals are boiling and, uh, and they also mention scientists who is alone with, with overgrown hair. Uh, so, so these were the few concepts which were being related to science. When we asked people, anyone we came across that uh, what image, what is the first image that comes to your mind when we, when we uh, mention science uh, as a word. On the contrary, when we talk about science for all, actually science is, is the plier that we use in our, in our houses which, which everyone uses. Nothing technical uh, what, a, uh, what a surgeon would do. But plier is an equal science uh, as any surgical instrument is. Uh, bulb is, is equally uh, an origin of science as any boiling chemical in the library, uh, in the laboratory, sorry. And, and the similar way, the plow which is used in agricultural field is equally a, uh, a result of science advancement as a space launch vehicle is. So, uh, when we talk about science for all, we first need to bring that awareness that uh, science is not a subject, science is not something which is confined uh, to the elite and the intellectuals, uh, we, we as science educators need to convince each one and everyone that anything which has a logic, uh, which uh, arouses curiosity in you, uh, which motivates you to investigate, explore is science. Now science education, uh, when we talk about science for all, we are aiming at science education which would prepare citizens to deal with global concerns such as the effects of pop pollution. We also asked few people that uh, you, you should switch off the, the, car, the vehicle you are driving, uh, the engine you should be switched off when there is a traffic light. Uh, so when there was an obvious question that who am I uh, to you know, suggest them anything. So then there was a group of us and we said that you know we have a limited fuel and uh, if we are wasting it on the traffic uh, signal we will be soon running out of the fuel. To your surprise, I'll share, they asked, okay, for how many years will last with the fuel? I said, maybe next 100 years. And that too is an exaggeration. The reply from this gentleman was, am I going to live 100 years? So we are not identifying with the global concern. And that, that makes science education for all uh, as a dire necessity. We do not identify with the national concerns such as population growth. That another uh, reason that uh, science education has to be to each and everyone. The local problems, agricultural waste disposal. Through newspapers, uh, I am being informed that if I am if I'm burning my agricultural waste or agricultural uh, remnants in the, in the field itself, it is causing lot of pollution. I am still doing that. Malnutrition, sanitation and hygiene, tropical diseases and their prevention, 
the social issues. So when we talk about science for all, it is not confined to the laboratories or the uh, space stations or, or the hospitals. Science is something which happens every day to us and we need to be vigilant about the same. Scientific literacy uh, is the ability to critically observe, describe what you observe, explain it in simple words, predict natural phenomena and ask questions derived from that curiosity. So when we, uh, when we are working towards science for all, scientific literacy is the first stage or the first step which we all aspire for. So we need people who are thinkers, people who are able to put their thought process in words, they are able to explain and they are able to question the established norms, they are able to question their observations, they are able to question uh, the natural phenomenon too. Myth versus fact, the ability to think rationally is the first, uh, is the first stage which we qualify if I have a scientific attitude. Cat crossing your way, owl in your balcony are, are some of the bad omens which we have come across. In your NIOS booklets also, you will come across an example that Gopal and his father were moving to the market. On their way, a, a cat, cat crossed the way uh, of Gopal and his father. Gopal was immediately sobbed by his father and asked to move seven steps back. Gopal confused that how cat crossing the road and how moving seven steps back is going to help. But he did not question the father. And the father was convinced that this will bring bad omen or whatever they are going for will not complete. When we talk about think rationally, something which we would try to inculcate in our students is that not being sounding offendive, offensive or not, being, uh, not obeying the father, but Gopal could have requested the father that we are just going to fetch vegetables from the market and we have already reached the market. Let, let us try to explore that. If that does not complete, I would trust or I would believe in your, uh, in your, in your belief of cat crossing your way and your mission not accomplished. If not so, you would trust me that it is any animal who was frightened and to save guard or in search of food, this animal was on the road and we just happened to be there. So when we talk about scientific literacy, uh, ability to think rationally is, is, a, is a core part of it. We start questioning what has been uh, believed for, for generations by then. Ability to observe. Uh, we would try to inculcate those keen observer in everyone, not only the students who are coming to our class, but everyone we come across as a part of the society. A uh, lot of tropical diseases being broken uh, in your society after the rainy season. Communicable diseases, uh, the diseases which are born by uh, insects. And then students are able to relate that because uh, there was a stagnant water here, because they were breeding ground for mosquitoes and this was the result that every time after the rainy season, we come across a, a breakout of, uh, of these communicable diseases. But then that need to be done in the right spirit also. I'll share a very uh, light-hearted example here. Once uh, I was a uh, team member of a malaria awareness team. So uh, we, we made some uh, presentations for, our, um, uh, the, for the students and the people in the urban areas. So it was a presentation where we would uh, enlarge the mosquito and uh, share with them that this is the Anopheles mosquito which, which causes uh, malaria. So make sure that there is no stagnant water uh, so that this mosquito is not breeding near your house so that you can eradicate mosquito or at least you can, you can control the number of uh, people who are suffering from malaria. The same presentation we, we also took uh, to a village area uh, in, in the western UP belt. Again we enlarged the mosquito. So this was a school group which we were dealing with and then uh, there is this boy who stood up from the group and said that uh, 
that if this is the mosquito uh, which which um, causes malaria none of us will be ever suffering from malaria now this uh, raised lot of queries in me that this village has a has a lot of uh, stagnant water uh, health and hygiene uh, standards are low and how come this uh, child is so confident that uh, he or she or anyone in the village will never suffer from malaria on exploring further the child was not able to relate with the size of the mosquito and he says because we do not have such huge mosquitoes in our village we cannot fall uh, we cannot suffer from malaria so that was the ability to observe we now we have to connect it that it is just the enlarged version where we are helping you to identify some physical uh, features of the mosquito so uh, that is one of the other ways that uh, through a scientific attitude the uh, the keen observes are being nurtured ability to classify we we keep uh, telling our students that these are biodegradable these are non biodegradable this is the life of non biodegradable once a polythene material has been created uh, has been used it is going to be there uh, forever even if you burn it the remnants of it will stay in the environment uh, the the poisonous gases which are being released when it the a polythene or a plastic is being burnt but it it will not come uh, come easily to them so the same way when you teach when you inculcate the ability to, to classify on the basis of the properties of the material on the basis of their life uh, their uh, <clears throat> shelf life the use they are able to segregate and then they will be able to apply the same knowledge of ability to classify in their environment and would start segregating the biodegradable and the non biodegradable waste which comes to their households and would also be the ambassadors of environmental awareness the plastic uh, bags which are a, a boon or a ban again correlation with day to day events from each immediate environment of a child we can always Uh, uh, motivate the students that these plastic bags which are there you can take them to the sites uh, where clogging of the sewage system is there so a little rain also brings havoc to the city or havoc to the village life because all these plastic bags have have choked the drain system completely when we talk about the scientific literacy there will be correlation with day to day events from immediate environment of a child they would be able to relate yes that a, a very mild rainfall also resulted in in so much of water logging in the society so one of the reason for that could be uh, the plastic bags so how do cut down on the plastic bags we could motivate them to use cloth bag jute bags uh, and and then uh, a small group can be made who who can uh, design these uh, bags and distribute them so this way we would be able to get some employment uh, entrepreneurship would be nurtured and the students and and the people from the society would be educated also to to stop using uh, the plastic bags the health and hygiene again i'll i'll share a very small example here i've been um, during one of our uh, visits to a to a religious place uh, we we stop by we we stop by to buy something so there was this uh, vendor who was uh, who was selling the cut fruits so uh, we uh, have happened to have uh, some some uh, knowledge about the health and hygiene so we we just alarmed that vendor that there are so many flies sitting on these fruits so why why don't you rush them away and the vendor replied me let them be there how much they will eat now by by this small light hearted example that when i am talking to the vendor in context of uh, the disease causing germs which these flies will be leaving on uh, on the food and if the food is being consumed by someone the uh, they might be prone to um, infectious diseases on the on the other hand this uh, vendor who is not educated or informed or literate about uh, the about the health and hygiene um, parameters he is taking in terms of the consumption of the food material so if health and hygiene uh, is being uh, is being related uh, 
to the everyone uh, coming there or the people who are in, involved in the food industry we will be able to uh, create that awareness among them which is also our uh, one ingredient of a scientific attitude that you question that whatever is happening now science uh, as we are saying is not a subject it is an attitude so science for all does not talk about uh, the curriculum or the subject areas science for all talks about uh, a way of life my way of life is sustainable uh, i uh, when i move out of a room i make sure i switch off the light and the fan when i go to the market to procure something i make sure that i uh, i carry a cloth bag for me uh, anything happens Uh, which is not a regular someone is is looking very pale uh, i am i'm genuinely curious to know that what has happened to you please get your uh, there must be some deficiency is your diet proper get yourself checked so that uh, nurturing that that curiosity to question beliefs and observations how how come uh, crossing of road by a cat can bring some bad omen let us uh, go ahead and find out explore the answers even if somebody has said that this is going to happen a person with a scientific attitude would like to observe and through observation believe that yes this happened apply the learning to make life better when we talk about sustainability health and hygiene uh, we we talk about the scientific literacy uh, we we talk about a uh, environment where where everyone is healthy pollution free it is about that whatever you have learned you're applying in the right setup in the right environment and then further dissemination of it so science for all let us commit ourselves to be the ambassadors of the scientific attitude of curiosity of innovativeness and lick and let us take it further so happy learning to all of you and let us uh, commit that uh, we will make science uh, a, a a prized uh, position of each one of us not confined to the space stations and the surgical uh, instruments thank you